Christmas. Let's pause there. We'll revisit. Christmas came late for <laughs> yeah, your buddy Nick Wright, Jenna, with this game right here. Go ahead. Hang on. One second. We're in the NBA. <laughs> the Clippers playing oh. without Kawhi, making history yesterday, and not the good kind of history. They were down 50 points to the Mavericks by halftime. Largest <laughs> halftime deficit in NBA history. They went on to lose by 51. Worst loss uh. in franchise history. Now, Paul George, who did play, didn't play great, but played, took full responsibility after the game. Listen to what he had to say. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we got our, our butts kicked today. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one game. Um, I think we'll just take what we need to take away from today. Um, and we wasn't prepared, um, not from the plan, but just from us being ready to go. Um, and that's on me. I guess there are multiple wow. kinds of being ready. The actual plan and then the other Ooh. kind of being ready, which Paul George said he wasn't ready for. Nick, you agree with PG that this loss was not that big of a deal? Jenna, a, a new rule for this show just to make your life easier. You never have to ask me, do I agree with Paul George? He's on a permanent <laughs> disagreement basis now. Well, a sight unseen, quote unread, Paul George said it, I'm gonna go ahead and say I think the opposite. And this falls perfectly in that category. I am not one to make too much of a regular season NBA game, but there are, Kevin Wilds, a few exceptions. And one of them is this. If the following phrase is uttered, it's a big deal. And that phrase is, worst in the shot clock era, dot, dot, dot. Ooh. If you ever have that attached to you, it was a travesty. You know how I know? Here's how long the shot clock's been around. Bill Russell came into the league, shot clock already there. Bill Russell's been 100 years old my whole <laughs> life. He played zero games before the shot clock era. Nick, stop so it. when you have the worst game in the shot clock era, the worst first half in NBA history, it's something of a deal. And for a team that, you know, certain all pro, arguable, Hall of Fame caliber, good looking wide receivers argue on television are going to the NBA Finals, for those, for, for that team to have this game, I would be extra concerned. So, Kevin Wilds, I say it <laughs> yeah. was a big deal that Paul George is wrong and that they, that was an embarrassment for them. Yeah, I would say it's noteworthy. Uh, Ty Lu after the game, said, like, yeah, we didn't have a lot of fight, and we didn't have a lot of pop. And I'm like, you think? Like, even when they were down 50, I get it. The shots aren't going in. Dallas heats up a little bit. Kawhi's gone. But you can still try. So the fact, Brandon, that it was an effort issue, like, even late in the fourth quarter, Boban's catching one-handed, not <laughs> jumping dunks, and the Mavericks are, like, crashing the boards. Like, they're up 50 at this point. So for me, Brandon, I would be, I don't know, I, if you wanted to uh, bail out on your Clippers finals pick, which I think you should right now, I think it would be good for you. No, but no, I would be minutes very into the shocked. Season. What? He's Absolutely totally allowed not. to. No. He's 100% allowed. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do it, it Jenna. Long, you should. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon, oh, listen. <laughs> Listen, it's a big deal because of what Nick said, and I would have chose my words differently if I was Paul George, but it's not indicative yeah. to what's to come for the rest of the season. You got to think about it. A lot of emotions running high at the beginning of the year. They're coming off of, off of a terrible performance and an implosion in the bubble. And then you go out and on opening night, you beat the Lakers. You crush the Lakers. And then you play on Christmas Day uh, against the Denver Nuggets and you beat them. Paul George said it. He said, we didn't come to play. I was celebrating too much. The game just, just, just caught up to me too fast. That's what he said. This is a team okay. that didn't come to play. One team in the first half made nine three-pointers. The other team missed 18. That's all this is. Now, Paul George, I agree with Nick should have chose his words differently. And when you uh, do something I mean, that's never done it, been done in history before, it's a big deal. But you don't have Kawhi Leonard. You don't have Marcus Morris. This is a problem. Yeah.
And uh, they, listen, those 18 missed threes, they were just 15 missed first half threes away from only trailing by five. So they have that to hang their hat on. And <laughs> in the Clippers' defense, and I know people say that I, you know, I'm mean to the Clippers. In their defense, when Paul George says we just weren't ready, it is an odd thing in this year's NBA schedule that Adam Silver has added pop games. Like you had pop quizzes back in school. It's like, hey, we, we're day nope, not a day off. You got to play the Mavs. Yeah. Show up at the arena four o'clock. It's like, damn, I was already, I was opening more Christmas presents. Like, nope, you got a game today. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of dirty pool for the NBA to have the Clippers have to play the first pop game of the year. Uh -huh. And the Mavs obviously yeah. knew about it having played on Christmas. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't. It reminds me of 2013, December 9th, 2013, playing for the Chicago Bears. I go out for warm-ups, playing against the Dallas Cowboys, and there was no Dallas Cowboy on the field warming up. I think Daz Bryant came out in the tunnel, peeked out, and then ran back in. I immediately ran in the locker room and told the coaches, I told my teammates, I said, this game is over. And we went on to blow this team out. Everybody played well on the Chicago side. And Dallas couldn't wait to get back on the bus. So it absolutely matters. When you look at teams like the Saints, the Rams, the, you know, the Bucks, they're going, this is going to be a problem for them. Absolutely, 100%. There was tactics that we had to use to get through games like this. And, and I go back to that game again, December 9th, 2013. I had fur in my cleats. My wife had to take fur. She had to take it to the shoe, the shoemaker, <laughs> and put fur in there just so I can get through the game. I think it's, it's a absolutely uniform violation. matters, Nick. I think that's a fine. <laughs> I think you just got yourself retroactively fined, Brandon. I'm not sure if the league allows that. Uh, Probably. Listen, if they finish off the deal and beat the Bears, because they got to finish off the deal, then they have to be the favorites in the NFC. And I want the audience to understand how rare this has been for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, in his career, as of today, has been the one seed one time. Aaron Rodgers, in his career, has played a total of six playoff games at Lambeau. So for some context there, Rodgers has been the one seed once and played six home playoff games. Patrick Mahomes, has been the one seed twice and has played four home playoff games. That's not a Rodgers Jeez. versus Mahomes thing. That's a how well someone has been supported in Mahomes yep. and how poorly someone else has been supported in Aaron Rodgers. So under Matt LaFleur, this team is right now 15-2 and two in at Lambeau. If you include the postseason. 7-1 and one last year plus 1-0 and oh in the playoffs. 7-1 and one this year. They have been exceptional at home, and it almost helps in my mind that those two losses are, were against mediocre or bad teams. The Eagles last year and this year the Vikings, where it just feels like, okay, kind of a look-ahead game. So if they are able, Wilds, to win next Sunday in Chicago, they will be the prohibitive favorites in the NFC, and as an added bonus take, if they win in Chicago, Rodgers will steal the MVP, which is rightfully Patrick Mahomes', but he Whoa. will steal it from him if they end up finishing it off by being the one seed. So, yeah, if you're a Packers fan this morning, you've got to feel great. you got to feel great. Interesting. Yeah, well, there's, Interesting. there's nothing Cold scarier than a confident team, and nothing says confidence like wearing a costume. So when Devontae Adams just <laughs> decides to break out a real crown on the sidelines and other people are like it was just his birthday a birthday thing is it from burger king is it a shot at derrick henry it's like oh or maybe and this is something bill huber pointed out at si he's got kind of the receiving triple crown not totals but per game he's first in all these categories he's got 109 receptions he got 1300 yards he's got 17 tds so brandon i know people will say like well he's TDs? maybe the, the packers offense is too focused on Devontae Adams, like maybe you can shut him down. But even in that terrible game against the Bucks, he still had 61 yards and six catches. So I think they're a very scary team. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, I want your take on Devontae Adams, and if I can, Brandon, I want a little bit, I don't know why you just wouldn't wear another pair of socks. I don't know why your, your wife became a cobbler and, and started like really messing <laughs> with your cleats where you could just wear a thicker pair of socks. So go ahead. Listen, listen, I had so many tricks. I had hoodies underneath my, underneath my, uh, my uniform 
where you couldn't see it just so I can have an extra layer of hand protection. I had so many things. Look, there's no real take on Devontae Adams. I was scratching my head last night watching this game, trying to figure out why myself and others don't have this guy as the number one wide receiver. Look, DK yeah. Metcalf's a beast. Uh, uh, Tyreek Hill's a beast. We don't talk about him enough, but this guy can do it all, and he has probably, well, the second best quarterback, maybe third best quarterback, depending on who you like, Mahomes or Russell Wilson. But I'm scratching my head, Jenna, figuring out why we don't talk about him more.